Hello, this is Mike at Game for Scratch, and welcome to a quick and dirty look at a quick and dirty tool, essentially. Today we're looking at a product called Emblem. Now, the cool thing about Emblem is, well, to start with, it's completely free. It's open source, so if you want to contribute to this project after the fact, uh, I will link that down below. Now, this is an entirely web-based product. It's called, uh, again, Emblem, and it's available at emblem, E-M-B-L-E-M, -E dot pixel dash packers.com. I'll link that in the comments down below. Now this was shared on Reddit last week and it's a cool tool, but it's very focused in what it does. Very specifically, it is digital graph paper. So if you're designing levels or you know quick flow kind of thing, this is probably the fastest tool out there. So if you find yourself wanting to and reaching for graph paper, maybe check this guy out instead. Now this is not gonna be a long video because there's not a whole lot to this tool if I'm honest. See over here, this is your virtual graph paper. Uh, we can switch between rectangular grid, triangular grid, and um, polar grid, and we'll go back to a rectangular grid, and the left click, you start drawing lines, like so, they have handles, like so, and we just created a shape. Now, if you're from a Unity, sorry, a, a Blender background, the controls are gonna make immediate sense to you. If you're not, they're not. Uh, but basically, you can do B for a box selection, like so, R to rotate, S to scale, and G to grab or translate or move, however you want to refer to that. So it uses the tr traditional Blender controls to you know, modify your work. You can also grab individual handles uh, like here and move them around like so. Uh, so you do have fine tuned control over how things are done. Now you'll notice when I'm drawing stuff here, uh, I'm not actually lining up with the grid. Now that's an option here. So we can also do grid snapping. We can turn that on. So now when I draw, so I click Oh, that's the wrong click. Click there, to there, to there, to there, to there. You'll notice that all of my points are directly on grid lines now. So you can turn grid snapping on or off. You can even turn the grid completely on or off if you wish. Uh, now another powerful thing that we can do here is just freehand draw. So uh, we can come in here and just hold down the D key and just draw a shape like so. So if you want to have more organic shapes, you can. And if you want to turn those line handles off so it's just straight out lines, you can. So there's a D key held down. So if you just need to do top level drawing, you can. And turn our grid back on. We also have support over here for layers. So we can do layers on top of layers. So I could do uh, another layer. Uh, let's see which layer is. All right. So there's the one we've already drawn. So we can turn the visibility on and off like so. So our new layer is selected. We'll just go ahead and draw something on top and then I'll turn the visibility back on and you can see the end result and then if you decide that your layer is not right you can get rid of that individual layer layers are like layers you're used to that with whatever program you use already uh, now the cool things are you can also come in here and create a prefab so I'm just gonna do it with the draw key and like so so now that shape is selected as a prefab as you can see I've created up here I'm gonna right click and call this circle shape like so and I could go ahead and create multiple prefabs so this would be the the individual things you were drawing so I'm going to use a straight line for this one we'll create a box of some kind like so and then just select the individual shape you want to draw with and you can start pasting them down like normal now the cool thing is um, you can select them and modify them using the modifiers I talked about the earlier, the G, the R, um, and the S for scaling, rotating, and grabbing or translating. Uh, and then we can go to the other shape if we wish and draw some like so. Now the cool thing with this package is if you go away and then come back later on, so open up new browser, boom, we are back in our shape. And then when you're ultimately done with this thing, you just go ahead and export so save as SVG, um, and then we'll head on over to the download. And this actually bombed out on me last time, but if you've never used an SVG before, uh, SVG files are simply um, vector graphics files defined as, as you can see here, geometric details. Now the nice thing about this is it means vector graphics scale up and down regardless to uh, the resolution you're dealing with. So no matter how much you scale it up or down, it never gets jaggies. And in theory, you can open SVGs in just about anything. So in this case, I'm opening up, okay, Visual Studio Code because I changed the association. But I should be able to open it up in, um, we'll do a web browser this time. All right, my SVG file is empty. Uh, you could also open it in uh, Inkscape and continue editing it, in fact. So let's actually do that. So I'll load up. Okay. 
and there you see. So that's the shape we just finished creating. And if you actually drill into it, now I'm no master of Inkscape, but each of these is still an individual shape. So you can come in here and then edit each individual shape again. Again, Inkscape is not my strength, but that's how you can ultimately get this document out. Now, if you want, oh, there you go. So there I'm individually editing one particular component. So, you know, we could change that piece up later on, etc. But again, Inkscape's UI controls are not my favorite, but there are other applications out there. There's the um, Adobe Illustrator, there's Draw from uh, Autodesk, etc. There's a number of applications that can edit SVG files, Corel Draw, uh, etc. So uh, Inkscape just happens to be one of the free and open source options. I just find the interface a little confusing. Uh, so if you're already familiar with Inkscape, you're going to be good to go. If you're not, it's way beyond the scope of what I can talk about today. And really, that's it. It's a very focused, straightforward, simple tool uh, that sets out to do one thing, and it does it quite well, to be honest. Uh, there's a couple of faults. Uh, I think my SVG file that it saved here may be corrupt, which obviously is a big fault. Um, the um, undo either doesn't work or doesn't work consistently. I haven't decided which one it is, but I wish undo worked a little bit better. But if you are interested, if this does look like a cool package for you, um, it's available. It's written entirely in JavaScript. The source code is available here on GitLab. Um, if you want to contribute towards it, definitely consider doing so. Again, simple tool, straightforward job, but it does it well. So if you're looking at you know, having to use a piece of graph paper at some point in the future, uh, perhaps consider checking out Emblem. It's a cool tool, definitely something that's worth your notice. And so that's why I decided to share it with you. you know, nothing really special, uh, but if this is what you're looking for, possibly invaluable. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do click like. And if you want news, reviews, and uh, everything else game dev related, uh, click subscribe, stick around. Hopefully you'll find something interesting here. All right, see you later, guys. Goodbye.